Have you ever stood in a light drizzle, felt the tiny droplets on your skin, and thought, hey, why didn't that just obliterate me? I know, it sounds dramatic, but think about it for a second. Rain forms in clouds that can be several kilometers up in the sky. If you drop a pebble from just a few stories high, it picks up some serious speed. So a drop of water falling from, let's say, two or three kilometers up? Logic and a little bit of high school physics would suggest it should be a tiny liquid bullet. Let's do some quick back of the napkin math. An object falling freely from a height of about two kilometers, pulled down by Earth's gravity, should theoretically accelerate to a mind-boggling speed. We're talking somewhere in the neighborhood of 850 kilometers per hour. That's faster than a commercial airplane. If a tiny speck of water were hitting you at that speed, it wouldn't just be a gentle pitter-patter. It would be a catastrophic event. So why are we not all running for reinforced concrete shelters every time the weather forecast predicts a shower? Why aren't umbrellas made of titanium? The answer lies in a beautiful dance of physics involving a force we experience every single day but often forget about, air resistance. But before we dive into the hero of our story, let's address a common misconception. Some might say, well, it's just water, it's soft, it can't hurt you, and that's partially true. A raindrop isn't a solid object. Upon impact, it splashes and forms, distributing its energy over a wider area rather than concentrating it on a single point like a needle would. This is a crucial part of the puzzle. Even if a raindrop were moving incredibly fast, its liquid nature means it would splash apart on your skin rather than piercing it. However, don't underestimate water. Have you ever heard of a water jet cutter? These incredible machines use a highly pressurized, super fast stream of water to slice through solid steel, rock, and other incredibly tough materials. The water in these jets is moving at speeds even faster than our theoretical raindrop, demonstrating that water, when moving fast enough, can absolutely have immense cutting power. So the it's-just-water argument doesn't fully explain our survival during a downpour. The key isn't just what the object is made of, but the actual speed it's traveling when it hits you. This brings us to the real star of the show, terminal velocity. It's a concept that sounds complex, but it's actually quite intuitive. As any object falls through the air, it's subject to two main forces. First, there's gravity, pulling it downwards and trying to make it go faster and faster. Second, there's air resistance, also known as drag which is the force of air molecules pushing back up against the object, trying to slow it down. Imagine a raindrop just beginning its journey from a cloud. Initially, its speed is zero, so gravity is the only significant force acting on it. It starts to accelerate downwards, picking up speed. But as its speed increases, so does the force of air resistance pushing up against it. The faster the raindrop falls, the stronger the upward push of the air becomes. Think of it like sticking your hand out of a moving car window. The faster the car goes, the more forcefully the wind pushes your hand back. Eventually, the falling raindrop reaches a speed where the upward force of air resistance perfectly balances the downward pull of gravity. The two forces cancel each other out. At this point, the net force on the raindrop is zero, which means it stops accelerating. It doesn't stop falling, of course, but it stops getting faster. It continues to fall at a constant maximum speed. This maximum speed is what we call terminal velocity. Every object falling through our atmosphere has a terminal velocity, and it's determined by a few factors, primarily its mass and its shape, or more accurately, its surface area. A dense, heavy, and aerodynamic object, like a cannonball, has a very high terminal velocity because gravity's pull on it is strong and its shape allows it to cut through the air easily. In contrast, a light, broad object, like a feather, has a very low terminal velocity. It has very little mass, so gravity's pull is weak. But it has a large surface area that catches a lot of air, creating significant drag even at low speeds. That's why a cannonball plummets while a feather gracefully drifts. Now, let's apply this back to our raindrop. A typical raindrop is very light. As it falls, it also isn't a perfect aerodynamic teardrop shape like in cartoons. High-speed cameras show that as they fall, air pressure actually flattens their bottoms, making them look more like a tiny hamburger bun. This flattened shape is not very aerodynamic at all. It increases their surface area and maximizes the air resistance they encounter. Because of its low mass and relatively large, unaerodynamic shape, a raindrop reaches its terminal velocity very quickly. Instead of accelerating all the way to 850 kilometers per hour, it reaches a balance point at a much, much safer speed. 
The terminal velocity of an average-sized raindrop is only about 30 km per hour. A very large raindrop like those in a heavy thunderstorm might get up to 45 km per hour, but that's still a speed that is completely manageable. Getting hit by something moving at 30 km per hour might sting a little, but it's certainly not lethal, especially when that something is a tiny drop of water that will just splash apart on impact. To truly understand the power of air resistance, consider what would happen in its absence. If you've seen videos of the Apollo astronauts on the moon, you might remember the famous experiment where an astronaut dropped a hammer and a feather at the same time. On Earth, we know what would happen. The hammer would hit the ground instantly, while the feather would float down slowly. But on the moon, where there is virtually no atmosphere and therefore no air resistance, they both hit the lunar surface at the exact same moment. This demonstrates a fundamental principle of gravity. In a vacuum, all objects, regardless of their mass or shape, fall at the same rate of acceleration. Without air to push back, our hypothetical raindrop falling from a cloud in a vacuum would indeed keep accelerating and hit the ground at that terrifying speed of over 800 kilometers per hour. It's the air, the very atmosphere we breathe, that acts as a planetary scale braking system, saving us from being pelted by supersonic water droplets. So the next time you're caught in the rain, take a moment to appreciate the invisible cushion of air all around you. It's the unsung hero that turns a potentially deadly barrage into the gentle, life-giving phenomenon we know as rain. It's as a perfect example of how the laws of physics work in harmony to make our world not just habitable, but also quite pleasant. The simple reason raindrops do and kill us is terminal velocity, a testament to the elegant balance of forces that governs everything from a floating feather to the planets orbiting the sun. Thank you so much for joining me on this little scientific journey today. If you found this interesting and want to explore more amazing facts about the world around us, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps us create more content just like this. Let us know in the comments if you have any other why questions you'd like us to investigate. Stay curious, and we'll see you in the next video.